If you recall, one of the big questions that we established at the beginning of the semester was to find the area under a curve and above an interval. Under a curve and above an interval. This uh, problem goes at the idea of continuous change because we want to calculate an area using length times width, but the length given by this curve is continuously variable. That's the calculus part of the problem. Calculus is about continuous change. I want area is equal to length times width, but length is continuously variable in this scenario. That's what we have to deal with. So the way we dealt with that was to take away the continuously part of continuously variable. Mm -hmm. We can use, if we just have a bunch of rectangles, then we have variable length, but we could just add things up and then figure out where the continuously part shows up. So that's what we do here. Instead of having this continuously variable, continuously variable length, we make it constant for some small change in x. This is where we built the Riemann sum. We have to write it backwards because we write stuff at the beginning. So to recap, our idea was to deal with the continuously part by making the function constant for some small changes in x. So I'm going to use f at xi multiplied by delta x. That's going to be the area of a rectangle, length times width. That is a discrete model of our continuously variable length. Then we can just add up all the areas of the rectangles. We know that if we increase the number of rectangles, we get a better approximation. So we let the number of rectangles go to infinity, and that gives us the area that we're looking for. So here is the Riemann sum. We can think of the Riemann sum as a discrete model of the continuous continuously variable length. This is our discrete sum that we're using as a model for our continuous sum. Note that as n goes to infinity, the delta x is going to zero. We're taking a smaller and smaller width of these rectangles, so using more rectangles, using more thinner rectangles. The important thing about this Riemann sum is that it leads to a definite integral. This is definitely the part of the show where some stuff happens, and this leads to the definite integral from A to B. Of our continuous height or length. And our delta x becomes the infinitely thin dx. So here is our definite integral. This represents a continuous sum. So that definite integral is the continuous sum. Here's where we evaluate f of x dx at all the points from a to b and add up the results, as ridiculous a notion that is. We say add up the results, but there's a, it's a continuum. There is no next no, real number after a. So when we say add up the results, we're definitely putting it in quotes. But we can think of this as a continuous sum.
We need some mechanism for evaluating these definite integrals. And the fundamental theorem of calculus, the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus says you can evaluate a definite integral using an antiderivative. You find an antiderivative So here's the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. This is where F, capital F, is an antiderivative of little f. And that's the fundamental theorem of calculus, part one. The first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus says you can use an antiderivative to calculate a definite integral. You can calculate a definite integral by using an antiderivative. So the fundamental theorem of calculus, part one, use an antiderivative to calculate def a definite integral. This is what we're on about in chapter five. In chapter five, we have a slight variation of this question. In this problem, I said area is equal to length times width. In chapter five, we just use a different application of multiplication. One of the things that we need to talk about with this integration business is what are the applications of integration? What we want to observe is that integration is multiplication, but one of the factors is continuously variable. In this problem, area is equal to length times width, but length is continuously variable. In chapter five, the problem is distance is equal to rate times time, but rate is continuously variable. So our thinking, this is the mechanical part of the thinking. This is how we build our Riemann sum, make things constant for a little while. The overall thinking about integration is that integration is multiplication, but one of the factors is continuously variable. Integration is multiplication. But one of the factors is continuously variable. Integration is multiplication, but one of the factors is continuously variable. 
what this means is that integration is addition. Integration is addition or accumulation. We're using the accumulation thinking about addition. The weird things that we need to cope with is that we're making a sum, a continuous sum. Where do we put the plus signs? And the answer is, don't worry about it. Just do your fundamental theorem of calculus. It works out. But that's the weird part. The amazing part is that we can do this. And we can do it so simply by just finding antiderivatives. So you can either thank Newton and Leibniz, or you can blame Newton and Leibniz for either inventing or discovering this calculus business. Not Archimedes, though. Archimedes drew a picture where he's thinking of a, a circle as a bunch of rectangles. And people say, oh, look, he invented calculus. So I go, dude didn't even have functions. So no, no, he did not. Not in the way that we think of it, right? Ah. So the other important tool that we have is this antiderivative business. And right now we can turn around our derivative formula to an antiderivative formula. The derivative says multiply by the exponent, then subtract one from the exponent. So if we un undo that by doing inverse operations in reverse order, we will add one to the exponents, then divide by the new exponent. So the integral of x to the n is x to the n plus one over n plus one, plus c to make the general antiderivative. That's our general antiderivative or indefinite integral. There are certain mechanical bits that we need to be able to demonstrate as students. We like to have you integrate things because it's a fast manipulation that we can um, get you to write down. It's easy to put on a test. It's put like a dozen antiderivatives where you add one of the exponents, divide by the new exponent, and then just turn the rest of them around. But as far as understanding calculus, we want to think about what this Riemann sum indicates relative to the picture, relative to what we're trying to calculate. We don't worry about what connects the Riemann sum to the definite integral. Is that part right now, just that's just how it works. And then where F is an antiderivative, that's our fundamental theorem of calculus. If you want to demonstrate that you understand this, 
think about trying to explain what's going on in the Riemann sum relative to this picture, relative to the task at hand. What you would want to think about doing is look at the four elements of this Riemann sum, the delta x, f at xi, the sum as i goes from one to n, and the limit as n goes to infinity. Think about what those four elements represent in this picture, thinking about this problem, finding the area under a curve and above an interval. Why do we have the, what are those, what do they represent, and why do we have them representing? Okay. From a more pragmatic standpoint, we need to learn how to x to the n plus one over n plus one in context of finding the area under a curve. With that in mind, here are some problems. In this set of problems, I want you to, uh, I'm describing a region. In the problem, we're describing a region. I want you to draw a sketch of the region. So draw a sketch of the region. I want you to write a definite integral that will give us the area of the region. So I don't need you to write a Riemann sum. I need you to write the definite integral form of that Riemann sum. And then I want you to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to find the area of the region. That is, use the antiderivative, write the general antiderivative, and plug in the endpoints. First is just under the, re under the line four minus one half x. This is just a line, so the region is gonna be a triangle. Make sure it matches up with what you know the area of that triangle to be. And then I have a parabola. Then I have the area between parabolas. And then I have one that we can't n x to the n minus one. Take a few minutes, work out these problems, and then we will break into teams. <laughs> 